how can I want to do what God wants me to do or want to be what God wants me to be? I'm Justin Bates with the Ask in Faith podcast, where each week we seek Christ-centered answers to life's difficult questions. If that sounds interesting to you, please subscribe so you'll never miss an episode and send us your questions so that we can work together to find answers. I love this question. It really gets at the heart of discipleship, uh, of trying to be like Jesus Christ, trying to be the person that God wants you to be. So I love the question, and it's totally genuine in the sense that it's hard sometimes to do the things that he wants us to do and to be and to think the way that he wants us to be and to think. So I'm going to tell a quick story that hopefully will help to show one way that we can increase our desire and help to change our hearts or allow him to change our hearts so that we want to do and be the things that he wants us to do and be. All right, so here's a story. Um, I once had a student who uh, many years ago who called me over during a quiet moment in class um, and uh, and I knelt down and, and said, hey, what's up? Um, and she said, uh, Brother Bates, um, I've got a problem. I've got a question. Uh, she said, I uh, was reading in my patriarchal blessing, which for those who may not be familiar with it, patriarchal blessing is a, a type of written, very special and sacred blessing that someone receives um, through a person in the church who's... Uh, ordained as a patriarch, um, and they give a blessing on behalf of Heavenly Father for that person. And usually you just get one that's for your whole life, and it kind of gives you some guidance and counsel about um, some things you, you want to consider as you move forward in your life. Um, so uh, all that being said, in this patriarchal blessing, it, it said that she, um, it seemed to indicate that she would serve a full-time mission um, as a, a missionary. Um, and that's not something that is expected or required of of all young women. Um, It's something that they're definitely welcome to do, uh, but this young woman wasn't planning on it. Um, And in fact, she said, so I'm reading the patriarchal blessing, and it says that I should should serve a mission. And then she kind of hesitated a little bit and said, but I don't want to. And so uh, we had a pretty good conversation, a frank conversation. And on the one hand, I I tried to point out that not everything in a patriarchal blessing... um, is always the way that we we think it is at first glance, right? Like there's lots of different ways that a, a, a certain line could be interpreted. Um, and so we want to be careful that we're not trying to take like a hard and fast, this is the only way this could be interpreted kind of a interpretation. But then the second one, the second thing I mentioned is is this, that the the purpose of discipleship and, and to some degree the purpose of prayer in our content, communication with God is not to get him to agree with us, but rather to align our will with his. We shouldn't be trying to convince him to do what we want, but we should be trying to be submit our hearts to his will, understanding that he knows better than we do. He understands us and our lives and has this perfect eternal perspective that we don't have. And as we humbly submit to that will and do the things that he wants us to do, that we'll find greater joy and happiness than we otherwise could have had. Right. And and uh, she seemed to take that message and uh, was was appreciative. And, and then we never talked about it again. And then I remember some years later uh, hearing that she had decided to go and serve uh, a mission. And I remember seeing a picture of her on her mission and she just looked so happy. She looked like she, having chosen to do what the Lord was inviting her to do, that she found greater joy. There is a quote from a modern-day prophet named Ezra Taft Benson, I believe, and I'm going to paraphrase here, but he said, those who turn their lives over to God will find that he, God, can make a lot more out of their lives than they can. Um, And that's been my experience as well, is as we turn our lives over to him and say, thy will be done and not mine, that things go better. And I'll just, because we're seeking Christ-centered answers to life's difficult questions, let's look at the Savior as an example. He went into the Garden of Gethsemane with an understanding that the weight of all mankind's sins and and all of of God's children's sins and sufferings and heartache and and all of those uh, things would would crush crush him um, like an like an olive press that squeezes the oil out of the olives. He would be crushed by the weight such that he would bleed at every pore. And he had an intellectual understanding of what that might mean when he knelt down to pray and said, 
uh, in one account, Abba, um, Father. And some, some have interpreted Abba to mean a more intimate, like a daddy. If there's any other way, I don't want to do this. But then comes that triumphant phrase, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Or, in, or another reading, not my will, but thine be done. And he submitted to his father and took upon him the sins and the suffering of all mankind, including as he moved to the cross uh, of Calvary and suffered there. And because he did that, we can all be saved. Because he, he chose to submit to the father instead of say, I want to do what I want to do. I want to be who I want to be. Instead say, I want to do what thou wouldst have me do. And I want to be what thou wouldst have me be. There's a greater joy and happiness that comes as we submit to him. So how do we do it? Well, one thing would be to study the examples, uh, the example of our Savior Jesus Christ. And one way he did it is he went into the garden hoping against hope that there was a way not to do it, not to have to suffer. He, he definitely wanted to do the Father's will, but he hoped there was a way not to have to do the suffering. But through prayer and communion with God, the Father, he was able to um, submit to the will of the Father. Um, and I think that's an example for all of us, is let's communicate and be in closer communion with our Father in heaven um, and allow him to help us to become and to do and to want to become and to do the people that he wants us to be. Okay, and, and uh, I hope that's helpful. Uh, it's not an easy road, but it is a disciple's road. Jesus Christ always wanted to do his Father's will, and through prayer, he gained the strength to do it. And we can too. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for listening to the Ask in Faith podcast. If this has been helpful for you, please like, share, subscribe, leave a review. It really does help. We want to get this message to as many of God's children as possible and appreciate your support. Have a great week.